Welcome to JTMJ Crafts, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are working on a whip in chat. That stands for whip in progress. All right, let's go. So today we are working on, I don't know where my picture is, but I will turn it and you can get a better idea of what it is. It's an owl. It's by JoJo's Arts, okay? I don't know where my picture's at. It's lost. Okay, so. I got a cover minder that says F-bombs. I sprinkle that shit like confetti. Yes, I do. Um, I'm using my new pin that I just unboxed on Wednesday of last week from Chromo Diamond Painting Pins. Absolutely stunning. And I'm also using my go-to tray by Mini Maid. So, now... Let's get into our whip and chat. Oh, hold on. Pause. Someone's coming to say hi. He feels like he was being left out. He's like, I know you have something up here, Dad. Can I, can I smell it? Can I t taste it? Can I, can I say hi? Hi, Bapito. Hi, you little Bapito boy. Yes, that's my man's. He'll be eight years old this month. Can you believe it? Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh. Yes. Eight years old. Mr. Trapper do. There's nothing there but diamonds, sir. Nothing there but diamonds. That's all. That's all. Yes. That is all. Okay, can I get back to my whipping chat now? Huh? Can I? Thank you. Okay, we're back. Trapper had to say hi. He's still over here bugging me, trying to get me to, to give him something. He thinks he's entitled to... <laughs> Don't start that. <sighs> no. No. Okay. <laughs> Pause. Okay. We have finally got Trapper simmered down. And gotten him a treat so he could feel a little special just like everybody else needs to feel a little special sometimes you know okay so we're getting into our women chat mm, where do i want my diamonds i guess my diamonds can sit here so i know it's been a hot minute since i've been on youtube and i apologize so, I know it's probably been... A, a, Trapper, leave your sister alone, please. I'm trying to do stuff here, sir. Oh, my God. He's not, don't, don't start. Don't start. Why is it every time I try to record something or do something, this dog and this cat want to mess with each other? Go lay down. <laughs> oh my gosh. He just looked at me and like turned his head sideways like, what's your problem? Oh, children. Okay, so anyways, it's been probably like over a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, I said I was coming back to YouTube and I was going to be doing weekly live streams on YouTube to just to keep you guys updated and posted and have about things that are going on and yada yada yada. Well, that's that that was a quick fail and hard fail. Um, let, let's just say my health went downhill and downhill very fast. Um, I got sick. Don't know what it was exactly. It, I know it wasn't COVID because I was tested for COVID. Don't think it was. Don't think it was that junk. It wasn't. I was tested multiple times for it because I thought it, I thought I was because I thought I was dying. But news say almost two weeks of me being sick. Literally didn't go to work for multiple days in a row. And when I did go to work, I literally would go in and I would work for like three or four hours and I would leave and I felt like I was dying even worse than I did 
earlier. So my time spent with work was very slim and few. Um, actually, um, most of my vacation hours that I had saved up for hunting season were pretty much gone now because I had pretty much took two weeks straight off because I was sick. Not fun. I went to the doctor. I got checked up. I got put on some medication to help clear things up. And still took two weeks before I got to the point where I felt like I was... I could go to work and work for four or five hours and not get... Or not even four or five hours, just a couple of hours and not get winded to the point where I was like... <sighs> like I need an inhaler. I'm like, I haven't felt like I needed my inhaler in a long time. But for this, I felt like I was, like, gasping for air. So, yeah, it was not fun. It was not fun at all. And then, so, that was, like, two weeks worse. Right? Before I finally started getting better. And then, the next week, I'm like, okay, it's been two weeks since I told everybody I was going to be coming back to YouTube. And then, ouch, my shoulder. Ouch. Shit. My shoulder just popped. That didn't feel good. But anyway, so, the next week... Comes along, and Tuesday comes along, and I was excited because I was going to come back and start doing a live stream again, and then sometime between Tuesday morning and Tuesday at, like, lunchtime, I had a tooth all of a sudden just decided it was going to act like somebody was pulling it out of my mouth for some reason and is screaming screaming pain and could not figure out why I was in this screaming agony pain for like three or four hours and I was just like I finally I told my boss about about 11 Eleven thirty, whatever it was I said I, I gotta go to the dentist I don't know what is going on but my tooth feels like somebody is trying to pull it out of my mouth right now. I, I gotta go. Sorry, but I gotta go. And he was like, well, this go so you can get back. Well, getting back was a freaking feat. I literally waited there all day long. And then they said, oh, well, we can't pull it today. So you're going to have to come back and wait in line again. To be seen. So you're telling me I've sat here from 11 o'clock, 11.30, whatever it was I got there. I think I got there uh, like 15 minutes before noon. And I sat there all the way through their lunch and all the way until about 3.30 in the afternoon. They finally called me in the back for an exam. I said, I'm in pain. I'm in agony. This is like screaming bloody murder pain. Like somebody has got a pair of pliers in my mouth trying to pull out one of my teeth. And she's like, I understand that, but this is all we can do today. And I'm like, oh my god, somebody just shoot me. Uh, so, she goes, well, since you're in so much pain... What I'm going to go ahead and do is give you a pain medication um, prescription. And I was like, okay, thank you. That, that'll that at least help cut the edge off of it because it was just like so bad. It was unbearable. And then she's like, I'm putting on, on antibiotic as well because you do have... Um, a tooth that is on the verge... Of being infected. And it was the tooth that I've actually been trying to get them to pull for like two years. And they would never pull it. And now they're like, yeah, this tooth's infected. You need antibiotics. And I'm like, well, good thing I'm here for this. But it still doesn't explain why my tooth was screaming bloody murder like somebody was trying to pull it out of my head. 
So I come home. All right, I leave the dentist finally at like 4.30. They go, okay, we're going to send your prescription around right now. I get in the Jeep, head over there. No prescription for me. And I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go home. I'm going to take a couple couple of leave or Excedrin or whatever I have here at the house. And I'm just going to have to deal with it because the, the, the pharmacy doesn't have it done yet. It doesn't have a prescription for me at all. So the next morning I get up, I call the pharmacy. Still no prescriptions for me at all. So I have to wait till 9 a.m. until the dentist's office opens to call to have them recall it in. And like. Three o'clock, three fifteen. The next day, I get a text message stating that my my prescription was ready to pick up, and I was like, "Okay, cool." I came home from work. I grabbed Trapper because my f pharmacy is on the other side of it's it's close to my house. So I was like, "I'll just grab Trapper, hit, get him out of the house. He can go for a ride with me for a little while," and grab something to eat because I was hungry, but I didn't really want anything to eat, so I was going to get myself a milkshake. And so I get there, and they're like, oh, we only have one prescription for you. It's the, it's the, um, antibiotic. And I was like, okay, well, I guess that's better than nothing because she did say I had one tooth that was on the verge of being infected, so I guess... I guess I'll have to take that and have to start doing that. I guess I said, I said, I'll just call them tomorrow and get this figured out. Because by the time I got up to the pharmacy to get pick up my pharmacy or my prescription, it was after five, five o'clock and the dentist's office was already closed. So the next day, call the freaking dentist's office back again. And they're like, oh no, we uh, we sent in your, your prescriptions. And I said, yeah, but you guys never gave the pharmacy a prescription for uh, a pain med for me. And, uh, and the lady was like, oh, really? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, no, I'm pretty sure I, I did that. So... I was like, no, you didn't, because I, they called me, or they texted me and told me that my f prescription for the antibiotic was ready to pick up, but the, the pain medication wasn't. I said, this is like, you know, a lot, of, a lot of pain for me. I said, can you go ahead and send that back over so I can get it tomorrow? And she was like, well, I'm going to have to ask the doctor to re-verify that before I can send it back over. And I'm just like... Mind you, I'm in pain. This is like the day three, or day two. Day two, day three, day two, day two. I think it was day two. It was the day after. Day two of being in pain. I'm like, you don't understand. I'm in pain. Like, I need something. Antibiotics, aspirin, uh, Aleve, Advil. None of that is remotely even taking the edge off. So I'm like... You, you guys need to give, you guys need to do something. So the, uh, the doctor comes back on the phone and she's like, uh, we already called your, your prescriptions in. Um, we feel like you keep calling about the pain meds because you're trying to scam us out of another prescription for pain meds. And I was like, you guys didn't give me a prescription for pain meds to begin with. And I'm in pain, so I'm asking to resubmit the prescription. That's all I'm asking. And and she was like, I already did that. And evidently the pharmacy will not fill it for you because you have an issue with pain medications. And I was like, I don't have an issue with pain medication. I don't have an issue with any medication. <laughs> 
I, you're, you're kidding me right now, right? And they're like, no. They said, you should try to take an aspirin or something. And I was like, aspirin's not cutting this pain. And so, yeah, I end up called. She hangs up on me, and I call back, and I'm like, yeah, I need to speak to a manager at this point because I'm fed up. Like, I already paid you guys money to be seen. Just give me my prescription that you said you were going to fill in the beginning with. I, I'm not, like, fiending for for pain ma- ma- management, pain medication or anything. And they're like, yeah, we just feel like you keep calling about this uh, pain medication that maybe that you have an issue with pain. But I'm like, I... Yeah, I have an issue because I'm in fucking pain. It feels like somebody's ripping a tooth out of my freaking head with a freaking pair of pliers when it's in my mouth. What don't you get? Oh, yeah, so needless to say, I never got the prescription for any pain medication. I just basically had to deal with it. And still to this day, I'm in pain. I, I It's gotten to the point where it's kind of like a numbing pain now. It's not as bad. I've kind of gotten used to it for the last, like, freaking week and a half now, whatever it's been. <clears throat> yeah, it is, it is not been a very fun couple of weeks, to say the least. <sighs> yeah, my mouth still hurts. They they said that uh, because it's it's a wisdom tooth that is giving me an issue. Um, thank you to my old orthodontist dentist for not pulling my wisdom tooth when my wisdom teeth when I was a fucking kid. Like I mean, yeah. Warning, warning. I'll give you a warning right here, right now. F-bombs are sprinkled around like confetti. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Yeah. Like, mm. So, finally, after talking back and forth, back and forth, they never gave it to me, and I was just like, you know what, I don't even care at this point. Um... Because I've kind of, it's kind of, I don't know if it was the combination of the, the a leave that I was taking on a daily basis and the antibiotics that I was taking some way, somehow the pain like lessened up and it was not nearly as bad as what it was. Uh, so that is good. But, <sighs> yeah, so they, they, they basically wanted me to go to an oral surgeon to have the tooth extracted because it's a wisdom tooth. And basically, from what they say, the reason why the tooth was in so much pain and acting up is because the roots that are coming off of the wisdom tooth, they said there's three shoots of a root, and they're all, like, twisted around with each other, trying to, like do whatever they're trying to do. So they said that's why I, she goes, oh, it looks like tree roots. And I was like, ha, ha, ha. is that supposed to be funny? So, yeah. Um, needless to say, orthopedic surgeons like two grand to have one tooth extracted. <laughs> uh, and I said, yeah, that's not going to happen. I was like, Um, you guys are just gonna have to pull the tooth yourself. And they're like, well, we really don't want to do that. And I was like, um, I don't care what you want to do. You're my dentist. And if I tell you to pull a damn tooth, then pull the damn tooth. Like, come on. I mean, who's right here? Me or them? Like... I'm paying them to do a task, and they can't even do the task correctly. So, who's right here? In my my opinion, I'm right. 
regardless. Customer's always right. I mean, hell, I'm paying to keep your lights on in your business. I'm paying to keep your freaking business afloat. I'm paying for your freaking employees' jo jobs. Hourly rates. Like, come on. It's not like I'm coming here and asking you for to do shit for free. I'm paying you to do it. So I just don't understand why there's such a grief about it. But anyways, so that is kind of sort of finally taken care of, but not really because they basically will not give me an appointment to have the tooth extracted. They basically just said that I need to come up and sit in the lounge and wait for an opening. And I said, do you realize that I work Monday through Friday from 8 to 4? So how do you expect me to just to come sit up here for... She goes, you could you could sit up here for anywhere from 8 to 48 hours waiting for us to have an opening. And I was like, <laughs> uh, you're, you're funny. You're funny. You, you really think I'm going to miss that much freaking work just to get a tooth extracted? Nope. I'm just dealing with it. Dealing with it as I go. That's how things have been going. What time are we at here? We're at 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Okay, and then most recently, the reason me being gone from YouTube and not coming back after all that went down, um, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm telling you guys, I'm not going to cry. But if I do cry, just, 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 Bear with me. Give me some condolences and, and try and make me feel better. Um, so, I got word one of my childhood best friends passed away. She was like a little sister to me. She was literally one of my best friends. I talked to her almost on a daily basis. I don't know what happened, but she's gone. And I found out about it on Facebook through a... Mutual friend. And that, that is, that's really, really messed with me a lot this past, well, it happened the beginning of, of April, so, last couple of weeks, I've been really depressed and, <sighs> just trying to live. Trying to get by day to day wasn't easy. I'll tell you that much. It was not easy. But I tell you one thing my dog, uh, that dog, he, he's, he's my savior because there was literally times where I wasn't getting answers from the, what, what I was needing answers for. And my dog knew exactly what I needed. And he would literally just come in and lay his head down on my lap and just sit there and look at me. And give me those big old huge puppy doggy eyes. And then go... <sighs> until I came out of my depressed state that I was in. And started giving him lovin's. That's what really brought me out of that. And I, I uh, during that process of grieving for my friend, I quit drawing. Um, as a lot of you guys may know, may or may not know, I, I like to drop dabble in drawing um, on Procreate on the iPad and uh, 
everything that I was drawing just kept sending me into a spiraling downhill and I just couldn't draw anymore. I just take a break. I still haven't drawn a lick. Nothing. Cause every time I draw, I draw I draw stuff that probably shouldn't be drawing because I'm drawing like depressed shit. Sad, depressed, just broken. And that is, I just got to the point where I didn't want to draw anymore because I kept seeing what I was drawing and I just kept, I just kept thinking about her and Yeah. It's been, it's been rough. It has definitely been rough. And you know a weird thing is, is I think my cat knows that I'm going through something too because Mary Jane has been so loving and affectionate towards me. If I'm sitting on the couch, she'll she'll run over and jump up on the couch and curl up on my lap and fall asleep and just sit there and let me love on her and give her all the attention that she wants. I think my animal, the animals know when you're going through those times. And I just want to say this. I know I've said this multiple times before. Because depression is not something to be thinking to, to be to 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 uh, what am I trying to say here? Depression is not an easy battle to get over and get through. So I guess not what I'm trying to say is, if you are battling and you need someone to talk to, believe me, everyone needs someone to talk to. I have, I am very fortunate that I have one of my best friends from, from, uh, childhood that I could talk to still, one of my best friends from YouTube that I get to talk to whenever we get a chance to talk. Um, I'm very fortunate that I have a, 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 a very... Very understanding um, core group that I, I I hang out with and depend upon for supports and they have been amazing. But like I said, that was back in the beginning of April, so I, I am I'm starting to Get out of that that shell again, and I'm trying trying my best to get back to YouTube again. I I I would say I want to start doing lives, but I'm I'm not because I'm not in a f mental headspace to do a live stream right now. Maybe. Later on, in a few months, maybe after I get things back up and running again, YouTube content-wise, I'm trying right now, I'm trying my best to do, like, one video a week, and if I can make it work, two videos, um, just to try to get the ball rolling again, because... Just being able to sit down here and talk, it it, it feels it, it feels better. Makes me makes me feel better.
Um, Mm. I had something I was going to talk about. It just came to my, my head, and then for some reason it just like went out the other side. So yeah, be trying my best. Now that things are starting to look look up for me, to do one to two videos a week until things get more in line and everything is flowing smoothly and going good. And then hopefully by July, I hope to be back to doing a live stream every week again because... If you guys don't know, July kicks off the giddy up. So, you know, have your horse content ready to go. If it's a diamond painting, it's a cross stitch, coloring, um, crochet, like I don't care what it is. If it's got a horse in it, or if it's structured around a horse, like if you're crocheting and if you crochet horse prints. You're freaking in like Flint. I'm super excited because I don't know if you guys follow me on TikTok or not, but I've been I've been trying to post a little bit more content on TikTok, and uh, I made a video. I I posted it to YouTube. No, not YouTube. I posted it to Instagram as well. But I took a picture and I I kind of made a little video collage of my top four paintings that I have in my whip stash right now that I want to try to complete this year. One of them is ginormous, and I don't have a lot done on it. I'm I think I have the whole top done and the whole bottom done and part of one of the side sections done. So maybe like a quarter of the way. So and that one's for the giddy up. So I will be working on that here soon. I'm going to try, try my best to start taking turns on the paintings that I work on. That way I'm not getting burnt out on working on... Like, this painting that's sitting up here. This, this gorgeous thing. I got, I got two sections to go. Confetti. Confetti, confetti, and confreaking fetti. So, trying to mix up my paintings so I'm not getting bored of the same painting. Also, I think. Yep, I think, pretty sure, 100% sure, 100% sure, 100% positive, gotta verify it, but there is also some events that will be happening at the end of the year with my lovely sister and best friend, so you'll have to... Stay tuned for that because I'm excited. And I was trying to find a video, or not a video, I was trying to find a canvas to pick out for this event. And then I was like, yo, ding dong, yoo-hoo, you have a canvas that is over halfway done. 
just sitting in your whip stash. I'm like, it's time to finish it. So, come November, we are finishing Pocahontas for Native Heritage. Yes. Super excited. I also got to find a painting for DP Pink for BCA. I'm not 100% sure of a painting for that event. What do you guys think? I'll show you. I'll show you. Hold on. Hold tight. Pause. Bam. So if you don't know, these are the last two paintings that I completed for the DP Pink for the BCA in tribute to my mom. Talk about stunning. Like, look at the detail. Look. Look at it. Just look at... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's just, just stunning. I... I'm not 100% sure if I have a painting that qualifies with pink in it. So I'm going to have to start looking. And I realize this is contradicting myself. Okay? I realize this. Okay? Let me think about this for a second. Yeah. It is completely contradicting myself. So... I told you guys I was going to be working on a certain painting for the Giddy Up. And it's a big painting at that. But that's going to counterdict what I'm going to tell you guys here in just a second. Sorry, I had to pause and get a drink of some Snapples. So, that painting is like 100 by like 75 or... 105 by 75 or something of that sort. But from now on, all of my events that I host or co-host, I'm going to try my best to start finding smaller paintings to work on because I'm tired of starting these giant Mondo paintings. And then getting halfway through an event, and then being like, God, now I gotta finish this painting. I started it just for this event. <clears throat> Except for this this painting, because this painting is only like a 32 by 44. But I did start it for a Pacific event. I just didn't have the willpower to finish it back then. But I am trying to push through it now. So, enough about me. I gave you guys an update about me and how things have been going for me. It's been, it's been quite, quite the struggle. But how are you guys, most importantly? I feel like I have neglected you guys. I feel like I have let you guys down. I started this channel for the fun of diamond painting and crafting throughout this whole process. I should have just made a video every week and just put out a weekly video and stayed active like that instead of disappearing. <clears throat> Excuse me, disappearing for oh, what, like three months now. So I am sorry for that. I I feel I feel bad. I feel like, and you guys don't understand how many times I have felt like I just wanted to quit YouTube and just not do it anymore. But it was you guys as my subscribers that are so loyal and continue to come back and watch after me not posting anything and you're still coming back and watching and commenting and blowing my mind of how awesome you guys truly 
truly are. So, thank you for everybody that has been here from the start and is or new here. Thank you so much for being here. I truly, truly appreciate each and every one of you. But from now on, we are on, on, on. Jeez, can I say on one more time? We are on a mission to do, like I said, I'm going to shoot for a weekly video, and if I have the content to do more, like, actually today, the day that I am recording this, which is Wednesday, um, I just put up a small business haul for you guys, um, I just decided all of a sudden, out of the spur of the moment, I, I seen some goodies that I liked, I seen a tray that I liked, I seen a pen that I liked, I seen another tray that I liked, I seen a bunch of cover minders that I liked, and I was just like, mine, 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 give me, give me, give me, it's mine, give me it, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine, so I went on a little bit of a shopping detail. You guys don't mind, right? It's extra content. My pocketbook was screaming at me, though, because I think I spent, like, way too much money that week, but... Oh, well. It's what happens when you're addicted to diamond painting goodies. Addicted to cover minders. Especially cover minders. <laughs> They're so awesome. And, and, and any any of my my diamond painting friends out there know how to make cover minders out of this material, please send me a DM because I have been trying to figure out how to make these for the longest time. I have no clue how to make them, but I thought it would be really cool to be able to make my own, to buy the machine and be able to make my own and maybe, like, maybe, maybe start a small cover binder business or something. Just keep it, like, low-key small. But, you know, nothing stays low-key and small. This, this, is, this, is, this is bugging me. It, 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 it's, it's bugging me. There we go. There we go. OC, OC, OCD was like, yeah, straighten that out now. What's up, Machito? Yeah, I call Trapper Machito. He's my Cheeto boy. I have several nicknames for my dog. Okay, don't even get me started. Okay, anyways, so how are you guys doing? I hope you guys are all doing a fan. Fantastic. So, speaking of dogs, let's go ahead and give a animal update, since you guys haven't seen me in a couple of months. Well, not really. I mean, I've been posting a video here and a video there. Excuse me. Snapple burp. But anyways, so... Let's start off at the top of my pack. We have Little Miss Mary Jane. She is the eldest of the pack. So we will start with her. MJ. Kitty, 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 kitty. I don't know where she's at. Uh, she's doing good. Mary Jane turned God. I think she she turns twelve this coming June. Oh my god! Where does the time go? Trapper will be eight in a, like seventeen days on the seventeenth of this month. Wow, time flies. Okay, anyways, Mary Jane is doing. Oh, there she is. Mary, you getting a drink of water, honey? 
Hmm? You getting a drink of water, honey? Oh, somebody jealous. Oh, somebody jealous. No, oh, Trapper, no. Oh, that's a jealous little boy. Yes. All right. Mary Jane is still over there. Ah, oh, stop it. Anyways, she's doing fantastic. She is, as you see, as you hear her response to Trapper, is, ah, ah, giving him fuss as usual. Huh, yes, giving the fussy boy fuss. Um, but yeah, she's doing good. She's uh, quite a bit more nicer towards me lately, which is really strange, but, you know. It, it it it's doable. She hasn't bit me. She hasn't attacked me. She hasn't done nothing to me in quite a quite a long time. As you guys seen right there when she was on the floor, I was sitting there petting her. She didn't do nothing to me. She like she doesn't really care anymore. It's like strange. Maybe. The older she is, the calmer she's getting. Will you stop? I'm over here getting attacked by a dog. He's over here rubbing up against me. He rubs all the way this way, turns around and rubs all the way this way, and just like pushing my chair side to side, back and forth, being a little turd nugget. But yeah, anyways, so Mary Jane is doing fantastic. She sleeps with me every night. She, She's actually got a new spot where she sleeps out on my bed. I don't like it that much, but she seems she likes it. Um, and she doesn't really give, give me any problems when I go to uh, give her lovings when she's sleeping over there. So it, it, it is what it is, I guess. And then as you guys see, Trapper do. You guys know trap do, Mr. Mischievous, Mr. Machito Boy, and the nickname is Machito, or Cheeto Boy. I don't know. I have multiple nicknames for my dog. Don't judge me. It just, whatever comes to name, I, I name him. I mean, one day I could be like, hey, Fido, come here. I, it, it just, it is what it is. Or Pooh Butt. I call him Pooh Butt a lot. Come here, Pooh Butt, because he's got a pooey butt. The dog. Oof. Okay, so another thing about Trapper. He got his dog food changed about a month and a half, two months ago or something like that. He got his dog food changed to a new dog food. Oh my god. That's how he got his nickname, Pooh Butt, because that dog had the worst gas for like two weeks straight. This dog literally, I... I swear, I would come home from work to let him out to go to the bathroom. And I swear, as bad as it smelled in this house, I thought he pooped his pants all over this house. And I'm like, oh my god, you better not have shit in my house. I start looking everywhere. I can't find nothing. I still can't find nothing. I'm like, you better check your drawers, boy, because if, if you're farting that bad, right? Like, <laughs> I know if it was me, I, there's no way I'd have drawers left after coming in the house smelling like that. I was like, damn. I don't know what it is about that, that new dog food, but it, it, it tore up his stomach for like a good couple weeks. But he is... 
um, doing a lot better on the new dog food. He uh, doesn't seem to be as um, he doesn't seem to be as itchy anymore as he used to be. But I also started giving him something for his itchiness because. He, Trapper's really allergic to grass. So whenever he is out and about in grass, and, and that's the bad thing, he loves grass. I will try my best to put up a video in here, somewhere in here. But this dog, every day when I get home from lunch, he w walks straight out the sliding glass door and walks straight out underneath the big fruit tree out there, or the fruitless mulberry. And he will just walk over and just tuck his head and just fall over and just sit out there and roll around on, on the grass. And then when he comes back inside, he's like all... <laughs> his... His paws are all red. His face is all red. He just gets all... This, this is horrible. But I found at Chewy.com, they have a itch and allergy relief pill made specifically for dogs and cats. So it says that I should give him like uh, four pills. For his size or something like that. And I'm just like. I would not take four pill allergy pills myself. I'm not giving my dog four of those pills. So I, I first I just started him out with a half a pill. To see if there's been any change in anything. And man. he He seems to be a different dog lately. He, uh, want, first off, his ear infections are both gone. I don't know if that had something to do with the old food or what, but both ear infections are pretty much gone. He still, uh, likes to shake his head a lot. And people go, oh, has he got an ear infection? No, he doesn't. He just... He was so used to having them all the time and shaking his head so much, he just kind of shakes his head a lot now. But, uh... He's doing a lot better. New medication, or new dog food, the new allergy pill. I give him a half of one a day. It seems to, to really cut the edge. Because I'm telling you, after he would get done outside... And when I would come home from f from uh, from work for lunch or in the evening when I get done with work and I come home, he would literally go outside for 15, 20 minutes and then he would come inside and he would literally chew on his on his feet until they were like pink, almost bloody. And just sit there and chew on them and chew on them and chew on them and chew on them. Now, after the, a half a pill, he will come inside and he he might chew on them, or not even chew on them, really. He licks them now for a minute or so, and then he'll just go and lay down. And it's like, completely changed dog. It's It's really strange that a little tiny pill can do this. Okay, look at, I'm not showing you the RC car, I'm going to show you Trapper. Daughter sleeping on the couch. <laughs> what are you doing? Did I catch you snoozing, Bobo? Oh, kitty cat. 
Did I catch you snoozing? Hmm? Was you snoozing for a bruising over there, mister? Yeah. I was you snoozing for a bruising. Hmm. This dog, every time he gets up over the, off the couch or off the chair, Mary Jane will be sitting over that direction by the fireplace over there, and he has to, like, round her up and chase her over here to the table. It's so funny. Huh. Are you just telling everybody about you? Yeah. Telling everybody about you. You don't have anything going on in your ears. I don't know why you're... You're shaking your head. He doesn't whine. He doesn't cry when he touches his ears anymore. It's like a completely changed dog. Just got itchy, huh? Just got itches, huh? All right. So we have a few more minutes before we gonna wrap this up and mosey on out of here. Um, update on Mary and Trapper. Let's go to Nooms. She is the third eldest in the household. Nooms is doing fantastic. She is... Same old, same old. Doesn't like to be touched. Will run and hide from me when I touch her. She just wants me to give her food and, and fill up her water dish and make sure she's got calcium powder in her tank or in her her bowl in her aquarium or cage. Excuse me. And uh, her moist hide is wetted down every day. And she's easy peasy. She doesn't care. Um, Thor. Mr. Thor. The fourth eldest of the household, is awoken from his brumation and has been on an eating cycle like you would not believe. The first day this bearded dragon woke up from his brumation sleep for like almost two months he was sleeping, Now, yeah, I did get in there into his bed, check on him, make sure he was alive in that time. But when he woke up and decided he was ready for food, the first day he was out of his brumation, he ate almost 150 crickets alone on the first day that he was out of his brumation. And then the second day, he uh, got a nice hot soaking in the bathtub and let him get a good swimming in. And then right before I was getting ready to finish up with him, he took a big old poop in the bathtub. And I was like, well, thanks. That's easier to clean up that way than it is to clean up in your tank, I guess. And that's way common for a bearded dragon to do that when they are swimming or getting hydrated through water. But yeah, he's doing fantastic. He's uh, in bed right now, snoozing away. But uh, since he's woken up, like, it's probably been about a week now, week and a half now. He's probably eaten over a thousand crickets and has just been on an eating mission. And then Mr. Uh, Blue um, is his nickname. Um, his real name is Sinonagig. Um, it means blue in Native American language. Oh, well, I should say Cherokee. And you say it Sinonagig. Um he is a blue belly lizard that is native to California. Before you say anything to me about being cruel for keeping a native lizard, this lizard was on its deathbed. 
and I saved it, basically. Um, I found it at work, and my boss was like, what is that, a lizard? And I was like, yeah, it's all wrapped up in uh, spider webs, and, and uh, all dirty and gross looking. So my boss was like, kick it outside. And I was like, I, it's like dead of winter. I'm not kicking it outside. He had about maybe an, half an inch, to three quarters of an inch of the end of his tail, completely black, like it was dying. Um, super skinny, like super, super, super skinny. And I, I thought he was pretty much on his deathbed. So I I took him and I put him in a different spot in the shop. Um, hoping that my boss wouldn't see him. Um, it was still inside the shop. So it was still inside the heated area. So he was still staying nice and warm. Shh, don't tell nobody. Um, and then like two days went by. And I was sweeping and vacuuming the offices out and I found him and my boss is like I thought you kicked him outside and I was like mm -hmm, no you didn't I didn't have the heart to kick him out I said actually you know what I'm just gonna I'm just gonna catch him up in this little container here I'm gonna take him home with me so I brought him home with me he is in a 10-gallon aquarium. He's got a water dish. Um, doesn't really need it because he gets his water through his uh, crickets that he eats. Um, and he's got two different hides that are in the tank. Uh, one is like a uh, plastic, rock-type plastic. And then the other one is a cork bark. He loves them both. Um, is one spoiled little blue ballet lizard by the name of Snonigig. And I call him blue for short. His, the bottom side of his belly is a vibrant, very vibrant, like teal blue that. I don't even know if I have anything that would be close. It might be something like in between the two of these colors. So the one part of it is a very, very bright, vibrant blue, and as it kind of fades out to the sides of the stomach, it gets more of like a turquoise tealy color. Just beautiful. And I couldn't let him go and just die outside. Um, actually, right now, they are, they are hatching out. And I'm seeing them running around all over the place. I just... I'm not 100% sure if I release him back out to the wild again. If he would have the opportunity to to live out a, anything well of a life. So, probably just going to give him a home for the rest of his life. To make sure that he stays warm. Because what usually happens in, in their type of situation is... is they, some of their, the bigger male, bigger males and females, um, will actually go into a hibernation. They just have to, to dig burrows and stuff and get down deep. But the, a lot of the smaller blue belly lizards die when it gets cold and they'll, they'll just die off. They don't stay warm enough. Um, so I just, I felt like if I just put him back out now, he's just, he's not going to live. So I just feel like I hold the role of giving him a nice happy life. 
in the cage. It's got sand on the bottom of it, and I'm sure he feels most likely at home. So that's the way it's just gonna be. I may actually upgrade him to a bigger cage. That way he's got more stuff. Um, I, I thought about putting him into a terrarium style cage and putting in a whole uh, bioactive substrate and pl putting live plants in there so he can have like the most realistic style um, way of living. I thought about doing the same thing for Nooms and Thor. Um, the only problem is, is Thor would probably destroy it in a heartbeat. Because he's just so... So... So crazy in his tank sometimes. He would have substrate everywhere. And he would have plants knocked over and destroyed. It would not be pretty. But I still plan on building him a nice big cage. Maybe at some point I will put find a plant like a pothos or something that would be safe to put in with him. It would have to be safe for him to eat, so that's a question that we have to figure out later. But for now, I am letting you guys go. I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for bearing with me. On my venture here on YouTube. I promise I'm not going to just leave you guys high and dry. This video is for next week. And that gives me a week early ahead of time. And then now I can sit down and record another weapon chat if I want to. Or I can go record... A woodburn video, which I do have plans very soon on making a woodburn video. And to tell you the truth, how much I have plans to make a woodburn video, the woodburner is sitting right here. Getting it all, all everything ready to go. I'm just trying, I just gotta find one thing. And then I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, I'm just... Looking for patterns to wood burn. But that's it for today. I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for coming back and listening to me go through my speech that I had to tell you today. If you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, thank you so much for being here, fam. I really, truly appreciate it. I love you all. This is my brothers and sisters. I hope you all have peace and love and respect for all. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye.